Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be picking up where we left off on the front suspension, primarily working on the steering linkage, and I'll show you the new steering arms that I've made. So since the last video, I have determined the exact steering tie rod length that I need to give it um, very good geometry with the upper and lower control arms. I also now have that steering link um, bolted to these 2x4s and these 2x4s hold this steering link completely parallel with the upper control arm. And then if you notice here, I have ground off the steering arms that I had on the spindle because those were holding this steering rod way too low. So in running this parallel, I now need to remake the steering arms here. And I also moved my pivot point from, it, it was around here, and if you watched that last video about Ackerman, I moved it out as, as close as I could to the rotor without you know getting so close that I need to worry about rocks and stuff getting stuck in there. So that's how I brought this out. And then I cut off the mounting point that this um, rack had on here. It actually had this on there, which was meant for um, international tie rods to bolt onto it. I took that off, and right now I have just a, a plate clamped up here, and that's allowing me to, right now this connection point is just clamped in place. It's gonna allow me to move this back and forth a little bit, because what I'm gonna do here, now that I have this tie rod in place, and I have it three and a half inches to center off of the spindle, that's the same distance that it was before, I have made up some foam board templates that I think will work here. And then I've transferred these over to steel. This is the shape that I think is going to work, but now what I need to do is just lightly tack these on place in place so that I can actually remove these 2x4s, and these, I, these actually are not 2x4s, they started as 2x4s, but I ripped them down to the proper height that I needed. But I'll be able to remove those with this tacked and bolted in place, and then I'll actually cycle the suspension, and I'll check my bump steer, and if I need to make some minor adjustments, I can still slide that point in or out to make some corrections. But I'll tack that, cycle it up and down, if everything's good there, there's a couple other things we'll check, but once we get everything good there, I'll tack that a little bit better. And then I'll come over here and I'll, I'll cut this piece off where it needs to be, and I'll mark that connection point, and then weld all that up solid. All right, now we've got these top and bottom pieces tacked on. I've got a tack there, a little tack there, and a just a little tiny tack on the bottom piece, but it's enough to hold it in place. And I've removed all of our blocks on here so that this uh, the suspension can move freely. Now what I want to do is cycle it, because I have actually cycled it a couple of times, and I'm actually really happy with our positioning here, because as I cycle it, you'll see that uh, I'm, I'm saying that there's pretty much zero bump steer, at least there's absolutely none that I can see just with my eye. But let me, uh, let me get this GoPro going, and I'll cycle this up and down a couple times so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So as you're looking down on it right now, you can see that I've got it set to be going perfectly straight forward, and right now it's at ride height. So right now, it's perfect. If I take it up, that would pretty much be all the way at the top. And that would be pretty much all the way down at the bottom.
Now you'll notice that when I do that, obviously the, uh, the wheelbase changes a little bit. It goes in and out as the suspension travels. And the camber changes a little bit, so as it comes to the top, it leans in a little bit. But as the suspension's going up and down, it stays straight, at least as straight as I can tell with the human eye, which is plenty good for me. Which means that my, my geometry is good with the steering arm and the upper and lower control arms and the steering rack. So I'm really happy with that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to clean up. I got a real mess going on over here because I kind of hacked this steering rack all apart. And this isn't even the actual steering rack that I'm going to put in here because this is kind of a, a knockoff steering rack. But before I actually put my Seiko rack in here and hack it all up, I'm going to finish this one all the way through so that I can get a completely finished product and even have the steering connected and everything to be 100% sure that this is what I want to do before I take a nice Seiko rack and, and chop it up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark out this location because this now I know is exactly where I want this steering rod to be connected. So I'm going to measure this all out, mark that up, and then I'm going to take this plate, trim it down, and get it so that it's the proper length. And then I'll figure out my centers. This piece is permanent. I already welded this on there, but I'll figure out my centers and I'll weld that front plate to this plate and I'll drill a half inch hole for the uh, spacer, not the spacer, for the tie rod and I'll do the same thing on the other side and get that all set up and then I can reassemble this and then I can cycle the, suspens the suspension and then also put some steering into it because this right here is going to be my limiting factor for my travel. When this gets to the top like this is going to bind before this, like this will never bind. And this will get a lot of travel before it actually binds with this. So this is going to be my, my limiting point. And not only is it going to be my limiting point, but it's going to be even worse when it's steered from one extreme to the other. So before I solid weld this, just to make sure that these are all good, I need to finish the rack so that I can steer it from lock to lock and make sure that this is all good. All right, now after some cutting, grinding, welding, and all that, I now have my plate welded up here. You can see it's welded on top of the plate that I had put up there last week. And it just extends wider, and it's got the uh, bolt holes in the proper location for the layout that we had just done. And then I've got the Heim bolted on there. Now, it, the end product would actually have you know, the other one would be bolted over here, and then I would have a spreader bar that connects the two, and then that piece would also be welded onto here so that it wouldn't have just the support of one little bolt holding it there, but this is fine for now. So right now, everything is essentially in the position that it was in when I had all of the stuff mocked up. The only difference is now I've got my plates tacked on here, and I've got the spreader here, so everything is legit. And it is still good here. When it cycles, there's no bump steer or anything. 
and its full droop in the straight position is almost down to the ground the limiting point being right where the threads of this heim starts to intersect uh, I could grind a little bit out of there but you know you don't want to make this too weak I'm still gonna have plates that come behind here and they'll wrap about halfway up here maybe three quarters and then they'll have a little groove cut down in here and I'll also have a little plate in front here and this plate will also come down to about here and it'll also have a little groove in there to give the Himes some clearance but um, this is this is good droop I'm, I'm really happy with this droop as it is right now my steering always is my limiting factor and then up here the uh, steering link just clears the rack there which is fine so that can go down as far as it needs to and then this is also my limiting factor on the compression if I bring it up until I feel that make contact let me prop a board under here alright now I've got that propped up I can't get the board in there like I did before before I had any steering on there so I've lost a little tiny bit of full compression the limiting factor is the same here as it was on uh, the full droop to steering arm there I, I could still feather that in a little bit with a grinder if uh, I felt like I needed to get a little bit more travel but for now I'm good with that and at that point there's no issues with the the steering link now at full compression here if I give myself max steering let's lock it all the way to one side Now I'm able to put that into full lock, which that's probably more than I'll actually, you know, that'll probably be uh, tuned down a little bit because that, that's pretty far over and there's no limits on this rack yet. But if I go to full lock, the limiting point is, is still the same because of the way I radius this around, there's really no difference whether it's turned to the right or to the left. The only difference being when I turn it the other way, it's a little bit worse just because this gets closer in. But let's try that now. Actually, somehow that gives me a little bit more, but either way, I would be limited by the other direction so this wouldn't gave, gain me any travel. Ooh, man, I'll tell you what, guys. It's a long process doing something like this, um, but when you do finally get to the point where you know you're actually starting to get things in place and you can kind of move them around and see how things are going to operate it's pretty exciting uh, I hope if some of you guys are building something like this it's going well and you're getting to see you know positive progress like this because it kind of makes it all worth it to uh, to have it start coming together like the way you want it to what I have here is a geometry setup that gives me pretty decent Ackerman we know that this is not optimum Ackerman and it's not going to be perfect but this is better than I had before because I moved this steering rod pivot point as far outboard as I could I also at the same time got myself the proper geometrical length of this tie rod so that although I had to move it a little bit off the pivot points it's pretty much right on where it needs to be so when my suspension goes through the travel now it's pretty much right on. It's, it's really good. It's better than my other Baja, um, and it might have better Ackerman. I might measure it at some point, but I'm pretty happy with this, and I don't think I could do any better than how I have it right now, and I can't move the steering rack back at all because, as you saw, the steering links drop down at, at full droop. So I'm really happy with this. And what I'm showing you right now is 25 inches of travel from top to bottom, and it's this is not going to be set up with 25 inches of travel 
what I was shooting for was 20 to 22. It's got a, a couple extra in there, which is great, but I don't think the rear is going to get past 20. And I'm really not a big fan of having one end have a lot more travel than the other. So if when I build the rear, I've got, let's say 20 inches of travel, I'll probably limit this to probably 20, 21, maybe 22 if I'm feeling like a tough guy, but it's I'm, I'm definitely not gonna have it so that it's at maximum droop and maximum compression based on the limitations of the suspension. I'll probably max it to the rear just for vehicle handling. So my next steps are I need to weld this all up solid and what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to grind the other spindle apart I'm gonna make another pair of these I'm gonna tack them together with this one so that I make sure that everything is exactly the same and then I'll weld those all up solid I'll also make the other tie rod so that as I'm moving forward um, I'm not building one side and then kinda of have to go back to the drawing board for the other side even though I'm kind of only building this side for now I don't know if I'll show that stuff in a video. That's going to be more just kind of getting things done. I'm thinking the next step is going to be to figure out if I'm going with this tubular lower control arm, if I'm going to make a boxed lower control arm, and then figure out where my shock absorber mounting points are so that I can figure out where my shock absorber is going to go up here. That's probably what the next step is going to be. So. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, learning something from them. I'm trying to take as many videos showing you guys what I'm doing without making it monotonous, just so that you guys can see what the process is. I hope it's helping you with your projects, whatever they are, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.